Well, we're certainly getting into the Easter festivities this morning. And on the serious side of things, though, it's according to the PWC, and that's PricewaterhouseCoopers' fifth annual edition of the gaming industry out there for South Africa. And that's between the period of 2016 to 2020. The gambling industry posted the second largest gain in gross gambling revenue during the past five years. Now, this morning, we take a look further into gambling from its revenue to its pitfalls. So joining us in studio to do just that, we've got from the South African Responsible Gambling Foundation Communications Manager, Tony Mabas. And, of course, we invite you at home to always be part of our conversation. Remember that number to dial is 011-447-1742. Alternatively, it's 1620. And you can also leave your comments on our Facebook as well as our Twitter pages. Do you have a gambling problem? Are you struggling? This is the time that gambling issues start spiking in the country. If you would like help or if you know someone who's got a problem, give us a call. We want to see if we can get you some help this morning. Tony, thanks a lot for joining us for this conversation. You're welcome, Faith. Thank you. Now, it's a very interesting kind of perspective. We were actually speaking off air about how from 2008 we've been recorded to being in some form of a recession. We're still trying to even pick up from that. But when it comes to the gambling industry, it appears as though it continues to make revenue. In fact, recording its second largest in the five years. So where is the disconnect? Or are people willing to spend the money that they don't even have? Yeah, more, more or less uh, you find that there are people that believe that uh, during the economic uh, uh, tough times, mm. gambling is a form of uh, making money. It's a form of a quick win and only to find that uh, when it comes to gambling, it's not a queen win situation. Uh, there are no systems, there are no formulas to guarantee success. Yeah. And you find that people eventually gamble with money that they can't really afford to lose. And then that's why they start gambling with their houses and then they give away their cars. Exactly. And, yeah. and you find that when they've reached that point, it's purely because they are now addicted to gambling because they've lost uh, probably their last coin. Mm. And uh, you find that it's beginning to just not only affect them as an individual, but also it affects their families, their partners and everyone at home. Yeah. I mean, having a real conversation about this matter, it is so disheartening to walk into, and, and you are going to speak more into this, to walk into a mall or whatever um, a recreational center, and then you, as you walk past the casinos, then you see children lining up at, in the early hours of the morning because their parents are actually gambling. Yeah. So what is it about the casinos that continues to pull even adults to a place where it will be 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning? Right now it's to, it's to 7 in the morning, but I bet you somewhere in South Africa there is somebody sitting and on the slot machine. And the reason why casinos are able to attract such clients is purely because you then have those individuals that are prone to addiction in that uh, they don't set limits and that they don't allo allocate a specific amount of time yeah. that they are willing to spend at the casino. Why is it that makes it so, uh, so addictive? And especially when you look at casinos, I can tell you one thing from what I've observed is the yeah. dark lights, that whole dark lights when you don't even tell that it's even early hours of the morning. What makes, it the, what makes this exercise the most addictive? Simply because it's a, it's, a, it's a game of chance. So when you gamble, you're hoping that you'll win. And eventually, it's not always a, a, a guarantee that you will win. You find that you place a bet and you, you lose. And you try again because you hope that you'll win. You've, you've seen basically someone having won and you hope that you'll also win. So eventually, it becomes a, a, a progressive uh, uh, process mm. whereby it's an addiction that affects a gambler's uh, every aspect of life, you know? So when you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, some of the conversations that have been happening, about, especially when it comes to issues around sports betting, which is another yeah. form of gambling, yeah. even we've got informal gambling, etc. Yeah. But you were saying to me that sports betting is actually increasing, particularly in the townships, like it's actually swelling up. Yeah, you find that, uh, well, people are, no, are now aware of these uh, forms of gambling. Yeah. And uh, you find that to gamble, it only takes you plus, minus 15 rands, 10 rands, and you have that amount, you try your luck you win something, tomorrow you come back and you also refer to your friends that, you know what, I've played this game. I've placed a bet, uh, there was a game between a number of matches, I've placed a bet and I've won, I'm gonna try my luck again. And eventually, with the word of mouth, it spreads and you find that there's a lot of people that rely on such activities, on such gambling. And this is also related to Is it to as a form of income? Well, to some extent, you find people depending on such okay. because uh, if you look at our unemployment in the country, it's very high. Mm. And people, you find that they are sitting at home doing nothing. They've got that little amount that they are willing to trade off 
hoping that they will win. And it's not always the case that you'll win. Hence, the South African Responsible Gambling Foundation is there to say, gamble responsibly, know your limits, set the amount of time that you are willing to, to spend when you gamble. When you're winning, take occasional breaks and know when to stop. Do, do, okay, so you're saying that people, winners know when to stop. Yeah. Your educational uh, scope goes even into schools. That's correct. And the schools, it's more of informal, right? So yeah. we're, we're talking about five fee, we're looking at the, 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 the cards, we're looking at uh, poppy dice, etc. How then, which is, counts as the informal yeah, gambling correct, now, yeah. how then do you start regulating the activities of those young people, particularly in schools, who feel as though they can turn their 10 rand into 100 rand should they stick with the course? Well, when it comes to schools, it's one area that I'm very passionate about. Mm. You find that there are learners that gamble, and that takes away from the time that they require to do their schoolwork, their homework, but only to find that they're busy playing uh, cards. Usually when we travel around the country, you find that learners are playing cards, they play dice. We go there to schools and to educate learners to say, you know what, gambling in schools is not allowed, especially But why at are they age. doing it, though? Here's the question. Is, are they Great. doing it because it's, a, it's an issue of bread? Are they doing it because it's an issue of recreation? Are they doing it because it's an issue of chance? Because that learner is the same person that's going to be trading in their car should they even get to the part where they possess one. It's a very good question. You find that they respond and tell you that they are doing it because they want to supplement their supplement. lunch uh, money. Oh, okay. You find that they are doing it because after school... There's uh, uh, items that they want to purchase either for themselves or for their partners. Mm. So there are very re many reasons that they come up with to say why is it that they gamble. You, some of them they'll tell you it's something that they are used to it, they do it often. And we also say to them, gambling in schools is not allowed. And we also share information to, to, to learners to say, if you know of anyone within your communities or a family member that is affected, please refer them to our counseling line. We do have a toll free counseling line as a foundation. Simply uh, as follows, which is 0800 006 008. 0060 008. We're going to be giving that number yeah. after, through, after the show this or, morning. Alternatively, they can also SMS us on 076 675 0710. So when you've accessed that line, basically the foundation will present an opportunity to take you through our treatment and counseling program. Do our young people listening, because this all sounds wonderful and it's great talk and it's great that you've got certain measures in place for those individuals that may seem to be addicted to it. Well, this... Uh, 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 Take the 17-year-old, yeah. once again, who's thinking of supplementing their lunch money. Well, Are the, they listening well, to Well, the sad part, they don't listen. You, 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 there we you go. struggle to get their attention. And as so then if they're not listening then, uh, Tony, and, and let's have a real conversation. Now. You've yeah. got a young person, you're, you've got these education campaigns that they're going. You yourself are here telling me that these young people are not listening. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to pivot? What are you going to do to address the situation in a certain way that people can listen? You know the saying that if you do something over and over and over again, expecting different results, it's actually called insanity. Yeah. As a foundation, we've sought to create a list of 10 warning signs, you know around problem gambling. Mm. So we educate them more about the consequences, the repercussions that are associated with gambling, especially at their age. I mean, the addiction that is related to that. And most importantly, we also educate them about uh, the time that they need at school to do their work activities, to yeah. say, it takes away from that. You find that they don't even perform. So to, 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 to get attention, for them to listen, we engage various stakeholders. We speak to the Department of Education. Mm. We speak to the educators themselves to say, guys, help us through your career events, your, 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 your workshops. Call us in. Allow us some time to talk to these learners. Okay, so let's attention. go from the learners now to the, edu for, to the adults now. Yeah. Casinos. Do they have a CSI component where they do plow back into the community? Or are we talking here about job creation in the, in the sense that you can come and be a host or a hostess in my casino? Yes, they do have uh, a lot of uh, CSI activities that they do, some of, some of which are funding of bursaries and also artwork projects that are happening in the communities. So there is a lot of uh, activities that they do. And as a foundation, we also engage the operators to say, 
please uh, invite the foundation in, in some of your activities. Let's create a, a, a joint effort mm. in terms of tackling issues of uh, irresponsible gambling and also to ensure that the communities that they survive on are saved as well. Because you can imagine if you've got a business that relies on a community that is not healthy, so it, it, it serves to defeat the purpose. Yeah. Hence, they need also for responsible gambling. If you have a sector that you serve and the audience that you serve is not healthy, affected by gambling, or depression that is related to addiction, that is gambling addiction, then it's a problem because eventually you won't sustain that form of business. Well, I hope that uh, you guys can um, what is a, sort of improve the, the way in which you communicate, especially to schools, because as you were rightfully saying that if young people are not listening, then you and I will continue to talk until we're blue yeah. in the face. But so long as that message is not being received by the relevant structures yeah. and the relevant kids, then we actually are building an unhealthy society. But give us those numbers again so that we can know for, for those to, who want to. To, to contact us, please uh, call our toll-free number. Yeah. It's actually free on 0800. 0800. 006008. 006008. 006008. Okay, so that's 0800 006008. Yeah. And the, uh, the Alternatively, SMS. you can SMS us on 076 mm -hmm. 675 0710. 07 one zero. Five. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, well, those are the numbers to...